So, good morning, everyone. Uh, I will be presenting some data, a survey which has been made on behalf of State of the Net by the Research Institute ICSE. And uh, just as a quick methodology uh, description, the survey has been made in Italy since you are in. Sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, the survey uh, has been made in Italy, and since you are an international audience, please do remember this is a survey made in Italy in 2014, a month ago. And um, the methodology is the group, the group of people that have been surveyed and interviewed was about 1,000 people, uh, 18 years old of age and older, and uh, through computer-aided telephone calls interview or uh, mobile phones. So two different kinds of, uh, you know, uh, techniques. It's a, it's a panoramic view. It's a panoramic of uh, Italy, the life of people with internet. So it's more related to the notion of how people perceive and live and, you know, uh, spend their time or work or study on the internet. And it's been subdividing, let's say, in four main themes, uh, which are um, information and news, so how if we are using internet uh, to gather information or to learn about the news, privacy, uh, the role, the actual personal use and interaction and role that internet has in people's lives, uh, e-learning, so the learning, the academic world on the internet. Uh, now it's, again, you know, it's a survey which is mostly about um, the perception that we do have in this very same uh, time. Uh, so the first one being internet and information, we are looking now at the pie chart. So it's the blue uh, and gray and white uh, circular graphic diagram that you can see. And the, the highest percentage is 52%. The question was, uh, if in the next 10 years, all newspapers, you should, you know, if you had to choose whether to keep the printed newspaper or the digital newspaper, what would you choose? And the 1,000 people, 52% of them answer, well, the printed matter. We prefer and think about in 10 years from now, I think we should keep still the newspaper. So if I would be a newspaper editor and a publisher, I would be very happy and feel you know, very comfortable with this information. Now, the, the research has been actually subdivided in further categories. And if we're looking at the other chart, the line chart down below, the blue and gray lines that intersect, that's a totally different vision because it's a breakdown of age range, which means that the people that are the youngest, you know, on the left side of the chart here, um, are 54% uh, of them are in favor of the online reading newspaper, while on the opposite end, the, the elderly people, of course, are in, uh, in favor of the newspaper, the printed matter. So what's happening in the point, you know, anagraphically, unfortunately, it's not nice to say, but anagraphically speaking, the younger people are the future. And that means the future is actually in the internet. So the newspaper, the media, it would be definitely be going towards the internet. I'm talking about Italy, so remember. And the interesting point also is the fact that the chart is actually intersecting, that you see a point of the people about 44, 45 years of age, 45% of them are in favor of both, but then from that point on, the two lines completely separate and they become something else. Now, the next uh, question which was asked is like, do, where do you, who and what do you trust the most? So it's the re reliability of the source of information. And the question was uh, offering a couple of options, being the first one, let's say, do you trust most information that you gather uh, that are given you, to you by newspapers or by websites, TV, Facebook friends, please remember information so, uh, from Facebook friends, blogs, and you know, no, I don't know. So again, if we're looking at the first line, uh, we are talking about the printed newspaper, the majority, let's say it's quite pretty high for everybody, everybody kind of share, it's a reliable source of information. But uh, the highest percentage of the people that do really trust the most, the printed newspaper, are the people of above 64 years of age. 
But even the younger people, you know, they're, they're trusted quite enough. It's in the range of the 40%. Then we stop, we go down, and it's websites. And definitely this is the younger people, the, the first two range. So it's like 18 to 44 years of age. These are the people that trust very well and, you know, quite very much websites. Information, you know, um, that you can get from websites. Well, the elderly, you know, sort of going uh, further down, uh, asking the question to uh, older people, they trust the web less. They probably, this is not an issue of um, just of age. We, uh, you know, it's been bracketed in age time, you know, sort of in age range, but it's not actually, it's more like the generation, the digital natives versus the people that have not been digital natives, people that, you know, grew up in a world that already had internet. For them, it's a given, therefore they trust it. And the people that have been, you know, became sort of naturalized internet people, um, they trust it, but of course, it's not so immediate for them. Uh, so they still trust the newspaper more. And you can see the difference between, you know, for example, if you're looking at 64 years of age, they go from 65 to 34 percent. So it's a very, it's a very, you know, big step. TV, again, the younger people don't trust very much information from TV. And, you know, it's going, again, it's growing, the older the people, uh, it's getting more trusted, the television network. Uh, Facebook friends, it's pretty low, actually, average. Again, this is not showing actually the use of Facebook. It's more like, you know, the information as an information source. Then we go to blog, and this is quite interesting because basically the people in the age range of, you know, uh, 18 to 29, they really trust blogs because we are talking about a number of 13%. So it's quite consistent. And then, you know, some don't know. Then the next theme, which is privacy on the net. And of course, you know, it's a big issue uh, these days especially. And uh, so in this case, the analysis has been made by people that are uh, web users, that are people that are constantly and, you know, commonly using uh, the internet versus people that are considered non-users. Uh, and the question was, uh, how do you feel about the possibility that someone can access every data in your smartphone or computer? Uh, they were given a couple of options going from it scares me, you know, uh, I feel really spied, um, I'm surprised, and so on. But you can read them. But the highest percentage of the people, actually, the users, so the internet, you know, uh, citizen, are saying, I'm really worried about it. Who knows what they do? So this is quite interesting because these are people that, to the question of smartphone and computer, if your data are accessed and taken from smartphone, they worry. But then maybe they use other features on the internet very freely where the same information can be gathered. The non-users, instead, of course, they kind of, um, they are less worried actually about and then they think they don't really care very much because there is nothing so interesting and important on the computer uh, or on their smartphone. So it's more like, you know, sort of uh, daily information they don't really consider very, uh, uh, pr should be protected. Uh, so this is quite an interesting finding because you would expect that the people that are constantly, you know, uh, normally using internet would be less worried about since everything is accessible anyway. Uh, now, the, the next question regarding always the privacy, it was the fact that, um, for, for instance, uh, the question was, if uh, you're watching a television program on the, on the internet, so a web television, or you're using a social network, what do you feel and how do you feel uh, when they collect data and they, let's say that they collect your habits or preferences while you are searching uh, uh, and watching? And they associate them with your own personal data because they have your data since you're, uh, you know, using and you enter the system, giving them some data. Do you believe that the collection and use of this data should be allowed? And now this is, please do look at this carefully. It's 2014 and 2004, 10 years difference time. We are in Italy. What it's saying, the survey is saying that now, a month ago, the, the different questions were to, the, yes, the information should not, nobody should be allowed, uh, you know, to access my data, to match my data. 59%, it's 60% of the people think my data should not be collected and used. But the other, you know, the next number down below on the left, the yellow number, it's almost 20%. 
people say, well, eventually, only to a super partisan institution, so it's more the government or some, you know, sort of a, a recognized public uh, institution, then it could be okay. If you look 10 years from, you know, 10 years back, it's like, it's very different. There was a higher trust on the fact that, you know, okay, a bigger institution, the government could, you know, eventually for some uh, more public reason could access, it's okay if they collect my data. And uh, it, I, it was okay, I, I didn't mind, you know, I don't think if somebody would gather my data, it's okay, it was in the range of the 30%. So you see in 10 years the, the, the sort of the attitude that people have in regard of the collection of the data, uh, especially from the government or used by the government, has really shrunk. Uh, to age. Oh, his question is if this is correlated to age. Um, actually, uh, I don't really know. I think it's, I mean, I, I don't really know in the sense that um, I, I don't have a practical answer now, but um, I think it's more the fact that um, the reliability of many of our institutions has been uh, somehow put, you know, in a sort of a different light. We, because we can get a lot of information, you know, uh, through the internet as well, and we have a lot of, uh, cris you know, sort of matching information ourselves before somebody else was matching our data. I mean, constantly matching our data, but it's the reverse is working as well, that we can also put together many different information. So I think it's more really uh, an issue of Italy and the relationship the citizens, Italian citizens have with their own institution. Um, and, uh, and maybe, you know, I think it's the, the idea that no one should access your data is because somehow people felt, you know, through a lot of different uh, events that w will be, you know, discussed in, in the conference about WikiLeaks and the data gate and so on. Uh, but the fact that also we, I think we found out that a lot of people, which, you know, have been put to trial for different crimes, uh, 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 fiscal crimes or other things, um, have been also retroactively investigated through, for example, telephone data. We didn't know probably in Italy, uh, not everybody probably would know. Okay, yeah, no, what actually what, what just, uh, I just finished because otherwise I don't want to take someone else's time, but I would be more than happy if we talk after, afterwards. Um, okay, so, so again, you know, this is quite interesting uh, because the relationship that we have evidently with our, you know, the perception that we have of who is allowed to make this judgment of what, what our data are. Um, now, the, the, other, the other theme is the role of internet. Role is meant more as the use, the life of people. And in this case, uh, it was a very simple question. What is for you internet? What is it? And, and we have two different the colors. It's like the, the users, again, the people that are, you know, uh, internet uh, citizen, um, and the ones that are not. So, uh, which is, you know, in this case, it's this kind of spider web chart. Uh, where you see there are basically parallel lines, except the green line, which is the one in the, in the highest numbers, let's say the, the chart works at the, the center being point zero and then expanding, you have that the green lines are signaling the people, the users, and obviously they use internet. Um, the highest number is to search for information. Then the next one down line is to discover things, to create, so to be creative on the web. And then it's kind of shrinking down, and quite surprisingly, the lowest number is to introduce oneself. Now, please do notice this is not just to introduce oneself just on a social network. It's probably due to the fact that in Italy, people do not use internet as much to present professionally themselves. They don't use necessarily, um, uh, let's say, networks that are, you know, sort of more organized networks, not, not just to, uh, for a social exchange. But remember, these two, you know, the non-users and users are kind of a concentric, uh, you know, um, dimension. Uh, parallel almost. And then, of course, when you get down to the age range, they change. So, that we, again, you know, the youngest people are the ones that are using the most. So, it's mostly replicating uh, the first diagram we have just seen. But in this case, what's quite interesting, if we look at the 
at the red line, the one in the center, which is signaling the people that are 64 years old of age, um, they do not use it, it's almost practical, oh, sorry, practically to zero um, in, the, in the sort of, uh, in, in, to introduce yourself, because in reality they don't use it, and it's a little bit, you know, to share, so you share photographs of the nephew and so on, but it's actually going pretty high on to search for information or to discover. So in Italy, the people that are of a certain age, still they don't use it as a social network, but still to make, you know, to kind of gather information. And then the last topic, so, and then we can, uh, I'll, uh, I'll be over. The last topic, but it's still, uh, you know, quite very interesting, um, it's e-learning. So it's the online academic courses. And again, here we have the users and non-users, the people on the net and the people that are uh, outside, let's say, of the net. And the question was, in your opinion, how effective are online academic courses? Now, here we have three different um, observations that we can make. The, no, the users, so the people that are, that are accustomed to be online, surprisingly they say, we think it's like little effective. Okay, so Italians think it's not very effective. So there is not a very sort of, uh, the approach is not very much trustworthy of the academic online classes, um, diplomas. And then it's like the, the very effective and quite effective just accumulate at 21%. So it's not a big high number. Um, and then, though still 20%, which is almost the same number, it's actually saying, I don't know about them, or I don't know the, the existence, like, I don't know enough about them, uh, or I totally ignore them. The same question to the non-users actually is giving you, of course, lower numbers because they are not very familiar with the internet, but still, you know, it's, it's more reasonable. Um, now, this is what is this signaling? Uh, that, well, first of all, Italy does not have many, many online academic courses. Um, let's say organized as a full academic, uh, uh, for example, uh, diploma. Um, but also maybe that there is still a sort of a very traditional view whether the physical building of a university or, you know, physical, uh, online, I mean, a physical environment is still more trusted as being, you know, a good quality education. So this is, you know, uh, or maybe the, the, the courses that are active now don't uh, reach the people that could be the potential users. So this is just, you know, to, to it's a sort of a, the last, you know, we, we are closing this with this uh, big question because it's like, how is this happening, you know? Uh, because in many other countries, uh, electronic learning is actually going full speed. And we are a little bit more uh, sort of Probably we, we ignore it a little bit or we don't really trust it very much. Uh, now, one last thing and then I, I'm really done. Um, if you like, there are many more other information that you can uh, ask to the people of the XA Research Institute. And it could be possible in, uh, in the afternoon in the state of the night square outside at 5.30. So thank you very much and uh, have a good day.